Welcome to 5-Minute Pitch. I'm your host, Liz Saunders. 5-Minute Pitch is the competition that gives entrepreneurs from around the globe the opportunity to virtually pitch their business or product idea for the chance to win a grand prize of $50,000. This season, more than 30 entrepreneurs pitched their ideas via Zoom conference call to our panel of experts. And after a tough competition, five finalists are pitching their businesses live in Miami, Florida. Our panel of expert judges includes Greg Mercer, Steve Chu, Mike Jackness, and Scott Voker, all seven and eight figure e-commerce sellers who have run and sold multiple successful businesses. Today we are joined by our three guest judges, Alana Wexler, founder and CEO of Green Arrow Digital, a boutique digital agency that specializes exclusively in pay-per-click marketing. Bill D'Alessandro, CEO of ElementsBrands.com, RebelCEO.com, and Seven Figure Store Owner. His products can be found online and in big retailers such as Whole Foods and other national chains. Nicole Walters, TV personality and founder and CEO of The Monetized Life, a corporate consulting firm providing business and financial solutions to everyday entrepreneurs. Today we finish off the finals pitches with Jody Davis, founder and creator of the American Cuckoo Clock Company. Good luck, Jody. Jody, welcome back to 5 Minute Pitch. Your five minutes starts now. Cuckoo clocks are an American tradition. Everyone has cuckoo clock history. At the American Cuckoo Clock Company, we are reinventing the German cuckoo clock, an industry that is deaf to a changing market. That is best exemplified by what happened earlier this week at my farm. My new horse sitter came by one day, and then a plumber. When I mentioned we make cuckoo clocks, the reaction was the same. They lit up. I have my grandma's such great memories. Both jumped at the invitation into the workshop. Entering, their eyes opened wide. The plumber loved my prototype retro camper cuckoo clock. Marla was transfixed by my horse Harley popping in, out, in and out of the barn clock, which you have here. Both responded with, these, are, uh, these clocks are unlike anything I've seen before. That fits in my house. That has been the response since 2015 when I sold over 300 quilt shop cuckoo clocks and thought, what if I had two designs? What if I had three? Then I'd have a business. Today I have six designs. Selling that many of each would be revenue of $1.1 million. How would I get there? At the end of 2016, when I had revenues of 144,000 with just one clock model, I traveled to Germany to plan out five designs which were promised for 2017. Unfortunately, all were delayed, causing me to miss marketing deadlines. The only one to make it in late 2017, the American Barn, had been underway for over a year already. It took two years to get here. The writing was in flashing neon on the wall. I took a big hard gulp and set about to become my own supplier. I tooled up, educated myself, and developed a team. Nose to the grindstone, we have spent the last two years becoming a cuckoo clock company. Now I have solved my problem. I have a true line of clocks now, considerable inventory, and more models in the pipeline. Here's my problem. My customer either knows they want a cuckoo clock but doesn't know we exist, or is an enthusiast of, say, fishing, but wouldn't have a foggy notion that there's such a thing as a fishing clock. How would you even search for it? So Google Trends is spot on. No one wants a dark, outdated, deer-antlered cuckoo clock, but Google can't measure a market for a non-existent product, even if there is a large demand. My customers have proven that demand by buying my first design by the hundreds. I have put nearly every single minute of the past five years and every last hard squeeze penny I have into this business. I'm single. I have no other source of income. I'm all in. My pricing is 25% to wholesale, then 40% retail. Direct sales bring a 65% margin. My insanely conservative projections are based on selling only 25 to 100 of each model per year. Remember, I sold 300 in one year of that quilt shop. In the next 12 months, we'll have 16 models, sell 850 clocks for $505,000 in revenue and net 262. Then, still saying super com conservative, in 2021, we'll have 24 models selling 1,300 clocks, giving us 747 in gross. That's just a mere 2% of the North American industry. Better yet, if the new models perform like that first clock, and with all your marketing help, they will, that's 4.3 million in revenue. Depending on valuation, that could be a $20 million business. 
Winning this contest will put marketing in high octane, blowing out Google love and brand awareness. We're already redoing the site to tell visitors the story, show the clocks as family heirlooms, charming prospects along the sales cycle. Our long-term goal is to spread so much magic that we dominate the industry with the destination cuckoo clock factory experience. Think Cabbage Patch dolls at 50 million, Vermont teddy bear factory at 58 million. The Germans have about starved the golden goose. They've made our icon nearly irrelevant. Hickory Flat, Georgia is be about to become the next black forest, handcrafting family heirlooms that reflect our passions and interests and fit into today's home, spreading smiles and making memories for the next 250 years in America. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsor. If you dread sales tax compliance, then it's time to take advantage of Avalara's powerful tax automation technology. Avalara simplifies sales tax with real-time tax rate calculations and automatic return filing. Avalara's software easily integrates with accounting, e-commerce, and marketplaces so it couldn't be easier. In fact, we use Avalara here at Jungle Scout and getting set up was a breeze. Join over 20,000 businesses already automating sales tax compliance. You can find out more at avalara.com. That's A-V-A-L-A-R-A.com. Jody gave a great finals pitch. Let's see what questions the judges have for her. I'm curious, of the people who've bought clocks from you already, who are they? What demographic? Who are your customers? The first clock I sold 100 just from my Facebook reach. But what are their demographics? What, th they what are type of older. people buy they clocks? They are older. It's like the 50 and up. But they're the ones who can afford a $600 clock, too. That's that's part of it. Yeah. yeah. What is your biggest bottleneck right now? Um, I have really, now that I have designs, that was my bottleneck. So now it's, I'm out of money. I started with an 830 credit score and two years in the bank. Two years of money in the bank. And I am I am out. So you have clocks, but no money to market them. Exactly. Exactly. What does it cost you to, to make? And, and you said you know, right. retail at six fifty. So right, average cost is about three hundred dollars, and that includes you know shipping. overhead and everything. It includes shipping. Is this a product that people will likely replace their existing cuckoo clock if they've got, or if you've got one, you're done? I have a handful of repeat customers of all my clocks. Okay. Yeah, the thing is, is that these clocks are going to be in here in two hundred fifty years. The industry is 250 years old, and those clocks are incredible keepsakes and our history. I mean, they're not going to be like some other products in the trash or in the recycling. These are family heirlooms. As I said, people have them in their family and love them and remember them. Think about taste and sound. It isn't just um, the visual, but the smells of grandma's apple pie. People, when I say cuckoo clock, they remember the sound. Oh, I used to lay under that thing and wait for the cuckoo to come out in the animation. That's the memory. That is what is so amazing about cuckoo clocks. Do you have an idea of how large the market is? Yes, there are 120,000 a year. There are 66,000 are imported into the United States a year. But that's these old ones. My argument is nobody wants them. And I know that for a fact. So when you give them, make them relevant, look at that log cabin clock. And I have a line of three coming along. One's going to be round and one's going to be triangular. We're staying in a very modern hotel and it's gray and white and marble. Put those on the wall. Oh my God. You know, they sing. So it's a whole different market. The aesthetic is totally different than that drab, that drab brown. <laughs> Do you find it limiting? Like, I mean, I hear you saying that you're reinventing. I mean, that clock Mike is holding is not what I would think of when yeah, I right, thought right, right, right. cuckoo clock, mm -hmm. right? Um, is there a different term or a broader term? Because cuckoo clock does conjure to mind my grandma's addict, mm -hmm. right? Right. But mm -hmm. that clock is definitely not my grandma's addict. Is there some way to broaden the appeal of cuckoo clocks? And that's got to be a marketing thing. That's got to be the visuals and the marketing. I don't, you know, I don't know what what else would you call it. <laughs> um, I don't know. Heading back to the marketing, uh, you mentioned that you were able to sell so many of these before and all of your funds were really going into production. So, I mean, you were just leveraging the power of social media. You've done nothing else marketing wise, no trade shows. No there are anything. a couple little things that have happened. I've traded hosting for some advertising, but mostly, yeah, 
Mostly it's just social media. So do you have any idea currently where it's going to go in terms of marketing budget? I mean, are you going to pour more into social media or do you think there is an opportunity to expand into other more traditional forms of media or integrating in with TV opportunities, things like that? Sort? Um, no, the TV opportunities, of course, but right. um, it is online. It's an online business. There is such a great markup. You got to tell the story. It's not something, it's not a $25 item. They don't just buy it right, right away. So it's a Google. People are searching for Google clocks. So we got to go to those people. We got to get them into the fold so they, we can tell them the story. I mean, it's an amazing story. My farm is part of it. All the animals have roles. Yeah. So, yeah. I agree yeah. with you completely that uh, storytelling is going to be integral in making yep. sure that you get this product into people's hands because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I did not grow up with a cuckoo clock. My parents are from Ghana, West Africa. So oh. they'd, be, they'd be like, what is this one? <laughs> like they don't know what this is, you know? So, um, but however, when I look at your modern clock, you know, right away, I'm like, I have a place for that in my yes. house. Or, you know, if I could get a custom order, especially at that 650 price, I would I would have that clock. So um, my so, yeah. um, custom clocks, like a Sesame Street, mm -hmm. are five figures. So tell me about the uh, Sesame Street one. So uh, licensing wise, you're able to make that work? Uh, no, no, no. It's a one of. It was for the retirement of Mr. Spinney, the puppeteer. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. But you do have the ability to do that. So if I were to say I'd like a custom generated clock for my office, you know. Um, and, and to me, that's all about PR. Sure. You know, it isn't something I want to spend a ton of time on because right. it takes a lot of time to design a clock. Right. But the PR I'm going to get We're from just that making clock, it a thing. Yep. And do the Got press it. release online and everything. You know, the whole. Sure. You guys know. Yeah, the whole stuff. <laughs> Would you be able to uh, possibly drop some of the expense by looking at different production methods or would that sacrifice on quality too much? I, they need to be, they, these, this is art and they're, you know, 500, 600, the barns, a thousand dollars. So Got they it. need, that's, that's the thing. This is how, these are going to last 250 years. Perfect. All of the insides are, are imported from Germany. I make them exactly the, the way they do. Thank you. <laughs> Join us next time for our final episode of season one to hear the judges deliberate, the audience vote, and the winner of the $50,000 prize announced. <laughs>